playing ZX Spectrum games in RetroPie doesn't work straight out of the box. We need to do a little bit of setting up. So let me show you how to get your Specky games working. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. RetroPie is a great way to turn your Raspberry Pi into the ultimate retro gaming console. And I've been making a few videos on how to do just that. So please take a look at my installation video to find out how to get started. And I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, it not only allows you to emulate all the 8 and 16-bit consoles and arcade machines, but also to emulate most of the 80s and 90s home computer systems. The Sinclair ZX Spectrum emulator is installed as part of the default setup, so you simply need to add games to be able to play all your specky favourites. Or at least that's what should happen. If you do try playing a ZX Spectrum game, you'll probably find you can't get it to work properly. Your game controller won't do anything, and the game doesn't respond to your keyboard, so you just end up sitting looking at the game's start screen and getting nowhere. Everything is actually installed correctly, but the Fuse emulator needs to be set up. So let me show you how that's done. If you've never come across the ZX Spectrum, it was the UK's most popular home computer in the 1980s. Its popularity was mainly due to its fantastically low price tag when compared to other computer systems, while still delivering a fantastic machine. The whole Sinclair business was built on this model of keeping the price low with innovative hardware designs so more and more people could afford their own home computer. Of course, with the massive popularity of the ZX Spectrum came a massive games library. The ZX Spectrum has probably got one of the largest games collections of any computer with literally thousands to choose from. You'll find some great titles, highly original games and hours and hours of fun. But getting back to the RetroPie emulator, the only problem with the standard RetroPie installation is that Fuse, which is the ZX Spectrum emulator that RetroPie uses, hasn't yet been set up correctly. It's not necessarily running the best version of the ZX Spectrum, and it's not yet connected to your gamepad or your keyboard. So these are the main problems we're going to fix in this video. The first thing we need to do, however, is to get hold of some ZX Spectrum games. Now, if you've been following my channel, and, and please do click the subscribe button if you haven't already, um, you'll know that I use MU Paradise to download the majority of my game files. MU Paradise is a safe, free download site that has pretty much every game for every console and home computer that you can think of. And better still, you can download complete game libraries in a single archive file. The only complication though is that the download links on MU Paradise are broken and they don't work. But there is an easy workaround which only takes about 5 minutes to install. So please check out my MU Paradise link fix video to get them working again. And I'll put that link in the description down below. So if you go to the MU Paradise website and then go to the ROMs and ISOs page, then scroll down to near the bottom of that page you'll find a link for the complete ROM set downloads. This will take you to a part of the database where you can download every game for a particular system as a single file. Clicking on the letter Z will take you to a page with a link to the ZX Spectrum download page. Click on that and then scroll down to the bottom where you'll find the download section and you'll see the download links for the complete ZX Spectrum game library. Again, this workaround link that I'm using here is installed by the fix, um, so do make sure you go and install that before you'll be able to download this file. Once you've downloaded the file, you'll notice it's in RAR format. Now if you're on a PC, you'll need to install the 7-zip archive software to be able to open it. So go to 7-zip.org and install that piece of software. Once you've opened the archive, you'll find a whole lot of software and information files. The game files that we're after are in the ZX Spectrum Games TZX folder. 
.tzx files are dumps of the actual game cassettes and these are the ones that will load directly into the Fuse emulator. So once you've extracted those files, simply copy all these TZX files into the ZX Spectrum folder on your RetroPie SD card. And again here I'm using my network share and if you look at my installation video you'll see how to set all of that up. Once those files have been copied onto the SD card we need to restart emulation station and now you'll have the complete ZX Spectrum games library at your fingertips. So now we've got games installed and Fuse enabled, we need to make sure that it's set up correctly. By default, Fuse is set to emulate a 128K ZX Spectrum. Now this is great for some of the later games, and indeed is essential for some, but it does mean that some of the earlier titles designed for the 48K Spectrum won't work. Unfortunately for me, this includes some of my favourite games from Ultimate Play the Game, such as Jetpack and Lunar Jetman. Now although Fuse lets you emulate any version of the ZX Spectrum, it's a bit awkward in RetroPie to tell it which version to use for each game. My advice is to set the default to the 48K Spectrum as that should give you the best compatibility for games. And I'll then show you how to individually tell Fuse what settings and Spectrum model to use for specific games. The great thing is that all of this can be done directly through the RetroArch user interface without having to manually edit any of the configuration files. So if we start up a Spectrum game from the main RetroPie interface, and once the Fuse emulator is up and running, even if the game does fail to start, hold down your select button on your game controller and press the X button, and this should start the RetroArch setup utility. Now the select button is the default hotkey that's created for you when you first set up your controller in RetroPie. If you did select a different hotkey then please use that instead. You should now be in the quick menu. Now you can use your D-pad to highlight the options menu and then press your A button to select it. You'll see a range of settings that we can play about with but for now select model and you should see a list of ZX Spectrums that Fuse can emulate. Highlight the 48K version and press the A button to select it. This should then take you back to the Options menu and you should see that the Spectrum 48K is now set as the default model. This change will take effect after we reboot RetroArch, so press your B button until you get back to the main menu and then select Quit RetroArch. This should take you back to the ZX Spectrum game list in RetroPie. If you now restart your game and call up the RetroArch menu, you should find that you're running a 48K Spectrum, and if your game wasn't working previously, it should now boot correctly. But if we go back to our game, we'll find that we're not able to select any of the menus, and our joystick doesn't do anything. So we now need to make sure that our joystick and keyboard are both connected correctly so that we can actually play these games. Again, we need to do this in the RetroArch menu. So let's go back to that by pressing Select and X. From the Quick menu, we need to select the Controls option, and this lets us attach various devices to the five ports in the emulator. If you select port 1 controls, you'll see a page with lots of information about the input device connected to this port. At the very top of this list, you'll find the device type, which is probably set to none. So let's make sure that this line is highlighted, and then use your left and right buttons on the D-pad to change the selection. My preferred option for joysticks is a Kempston joystick, but feel free to select whichever one you want. Again, we are setting the default option at this point, so choose one that works for most games. Pressing your B button will take you back to the controls menu. So that's the joystick setup. We now need to connect the keyboard. So on the controls menu, select the port 3 controls option. On the device type line, you should find again a different set of options. This time we've got keyboard options, so select the Sinclair keyboard to connect a Spectrum keyboard to this port. Again, press your B button until you get back to the main menu and then quit RetroArch. If we reboot up our game, our ZX Spectrum emulator should now be set up correctly with the keyboard and a Kempston joystick plugged in. A 
As default, our games will now boot with a keyboard and Kempson joystick attached, but Fuse makes it easy to customise your settings for each game in your library. You do have to do this per game, but it does mean that you can select which Spectrum version you want to run the game on. You can also set up custom joystick mappings, so that you can use your joystick for games which don't support any of the standard Spectrum controllers, especially those that use the incredibly awkward arrow key controls. To customise a game, you first need to boot it up and then call up the RetroArch menu. From the Quick menu, select Options. RetroArch uses a series of configuration files to work out how to set itself up for each game. To override the default settings, you need to create a Games option file for your game. So once that file is created, any changes to the options will be saved to this game specific file rather than through the default settings. So the very top menu item is to create a Games option file. You can then select the ZX Spectrum model you want to use for this game. And then we can go down to the joypad mapping options to have your gamepad buttons mapped to any keys on the keyboard that the game requires. So for this game, uh, Horace Goes Skiing, this will actually run on a 16k spectrum. If we go down to the movement keys, the left key is I, the right key is P, up is Q, and down is Z. I'm also going to set the start button to map to the enter button so that I can press a key to start the game. If I now go back up and save the game options file, RetroArch will now keep these game settings for the next time I play. So if I now reboot the game and start the game, I should now be able to use my game controller to control Horus. While we're in Fuse, uh, one nice feature that helps you if you haven't got a keyboard plugged in is the virtual keyboard. When you press the select button, you might have noticed a Spectrum keyboard appearing on screen. This virtual keyboard lets you simulate key presses on the actual Spectrum keyboard. So just press the select button by itself, and when the keyboard appears, use your game controller to select the key you want to press. This is very useful if you've had to map a number of keys to your gamepad and don't want to waste any buttons for things like the Start Game button. Just call up the virtual keyboard and press whatever key you need. So in this game, Lunar Jetman, if I don't have a keyboard attached, I can't select any of the Start options. So if I call up my virtual keyboard, I can select my Kempston joystick, and then I can call it back up again and select Start Game with the number 6 key. This virtual keyboard is also a great way to see which keywords and symbols are on which key if you want to have a go at typing in maybe a specy program from a magazine. So don't forget that by default the left shift key on your PC keyboard uh, maps to the cap shift and the control key is the symbol shift key. So have fun reliving the heydays of the 1980s computer boom. I hope you enjoyed this video and please do check out the project page of my main website for more information and all the links we've used in this tutorial. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos and I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. So bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.